Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a bit more informal. I was researching actually for another video and I stumbled across something that shocked me and I just had to share with everyone, all 19 of my subscribers and whoever else might be watching. Let me, let me explain. I was basically doing research for a video that was on the ethics of breeding and the differences between types of breeds of rabbits because you know unlike dogs where the breed actually matters a lot for how they're you know predisposed to behave um, in rabbits it's not necessarily exactly the case it's much more on an individual personality level of course breeders will dispute this to try to promote their breed as they're breeding the most friendly rabbit the most outgoing rabbit you know but um, in reality in my experience that hasn't been the case for example, like the typical white bunny with red eyes, I've seen super outgoing ones. I've fostered one that was so timid and so gentle. Lop ear rabbits are supposed to be like the perfect pet, supposedly. Um, and you know, a lot of them, a lot of them are a great fit. But I've also met very aggressive lop-eared rabbits that have had a hard time in their lives and are just dealing with trauma like a lot of other shelter rabbits. The point I want to drive home is that the breed doesn't matter as much for rabbits as personality does. And so that's why I think it's super important to go out and look at adoptable rabbits and really get to know them before you finalize an adoption. So basically, as I'm doing some research, I decided to go on the website of a rabbit breeder and uh, look at what they consider the red flags of a breeder are because while I don't believe that there's any ethical breeding of rabbits, um, I wanted to hear what their perspective was and so I landed on the Lots of Lops Rabbitry website also known as LOL Rabbitry and the information that I found on this website, I, nothing could have prepared me for what I was about to read. <laughs> so I wanted to go through some of what they say on their website and give my opinion on some of it. If you aren't familiar with Lots of Lops or LOL Rabbitry, um, the way I know them is that they are in the Bay Area where I go to school and I volunteer with the House Rabbit Society headquarters there. Um, so they're somewhat known through that and then also they're very popular on TikTok and Instagram. Um, I see their reels everywhere. They're adorable, by the way, because they have an endless supply of baby rabbits. They're just constantly breeding. They have a very large following on both platforms. I'm just going to play a couple of the LOL Rabbitry TikToks and reels just so you get an idea of like what this content is and how it does have the ability to capture people and do really well on the algorithm. All right, bud, welcome to the collection. On the shelf you go. <laughs> I'm in severe credit card. I've been meaning to ask you, what's with that pocket on your shirt? Oh, Jake's in here. Sup, Jake? And besides the fact that they are a rabbit breeder and I don't necessarily agree with that at all, working in rescue, I believe we don't need any more rabbits in the world. There are already millions without homes. Um, and so breeding on top of that number is just ridiculous. But besides that, the information that I saw on this website was like nothing I've ever seen before, especially in their like FAQs and the rabbit care sections and what they recommend for pet rabbits. And just a disclaimer before we really start to get into this information, all of my opinions are formed through my personal experience working in rescue. I've obviously, I never worked with rabbit breeders. And so I don't know what it takes to do that kind of work. My bias is definitely against the breeding of rabbits, just based on the what you see every day in shelters, it's pretty terrible. Um, you know, you hear so many stories of people getting a rabbit impulsively and realize it's a lot of work. So that's how a lot of them end up there. Also accidental litters, of course. I don't agree with any of that, but of course this person's opinions were formed by their own experience and however long they've been doing this. So I'm just gonna leave that there. While I might not agree with it, um, other people might find that this works best for them, but I will be giving you my opinion. 
So first of all, what are rabbit trees and why do I consider them to be not a good thing? So rabbit trees are essentially rabbit farms. So they breed and sell rabbits mostly as pets, but also for competitions and shows and whatnot. Their goal is basically to create the perfect rabbit specimen and show you want to have the best rabbit. So there's a lot of focus on genealogy and breeding and breeding and breeding until you get the right one that can win a show. As for why they're bad, in my opinion, um, rabbits are the third most surrendered pet. People often get rabbits because they think they're cute and they think they're small and will be an easy starter pet for a child maybe. And then they just end up in huge numbers in shelters. And because of the overcrowding in shelters, so many of them get euthanized. I believe that the breeding of rabbits just for the sake of producing more and better rabbits while so many are homeless and being euthanized is just, it's just beyond me. Um, I, I don't see any ethical side to it from my perspective. Also, rabbits breed like crazy. They have a very short gestational period of 28 days and they have lots of babies at a time. And so they just keep growing and growing in numbers, especially when they're like released into the wild or sometimes people don't know the sex of their animal or they were told it's another sex and then they have babies, which is very common. But in short, I just believe that we don't need any more rabbits. As lovely as they are, we do not need any more in this world. So as I was saying, I looked onto the LOL Rabbitry website for a counter argument for this video I had planned. The information on the care especially was just so mind-blowing to me. So on their website, this is what they say their purpose is in like the info section, the about section. I breed for the purpose of producing nationally competitive show rabbits and improving the conformation, health, and temperament of the breed. I believe that's a good thing to want in rabbits, but I think overall, when you weigh the effects of breeding out negative genes versus just the sheer quantity of rabbits, I believe that outweighs any good you could do from, from trying to eliminate these genes in the gene pool. There are already so many millions of rabbits out there that I don't believe that trying to improve a breed is going to make any significant difference in the lives of pet rabbits, but that's where I stand. I also looked in the red flags of what to look out for in a breeder, and I thought this was super interesting because I had never thought about like what someone who considers themselves to be an ethical breeder would think of someone who's an unethical breeder because I just see it all as an unethical practice. So what they said to look out for was not being an ARBA member, which is like the equivalent like registry for rabbit competition, rabbit breeding. They said that not being an ARBA member means that the breeder is not breeding for any specific goal or purpose beyond just making more rabbits. But isn't that like the business model? It just, it feels counterintuitive to me because you're on one hand, you're wanting to strive for the best rabbit, but to do that, you have to create so many and like just produce and you make money from it. So also not breeding according to the standards of perfection. They say that they care about the quality of their animals and not just cash, but at the end of the day, like, I just feel like the point of this business is to produce lots of rabbits and receive cash for them. And I understand that you might be doing so with the intention of improving the breed and making the most perfect rabbits, but like at what cost to the lives of the so many millions that are in shelters and dying because people don't know they can adopt at a shelter. They just look online like rabbit breeder or whatever or they buy from a pet store that might source from a breeder um, and it's the same result. Something else that was weird, they said there's also the possibility of undercover PETA or other animal rights extremists who would be all too happy to report what they see as unfit conditions, which are usually not. Is this a self-report? I wouldn't go so far as to say like 
an animal rights activist group is an extremist for wanting breeding practices to be shut down. Maybe that makes me an extremist. Um, but that feels crazy to me. Like, so clearly what you deem acceptable, these groups would deem unfit and like would have grounds to like take your rabbits away. So I, I'm just gonna leave that there and not touch it. Moving on to more of like the care of the rabbits that they produce and what they expect their adopters to provide for the rabbits. I, I was just shocked. I don't have any other words to say it because the things I was reading are so, they're so backwards and outdated. I, I've never even heard them in my life. And maybe that's just because of my environment and I work in rescue and, and all of this, but it, it was just wild. So they are against free roaming. If you don't know what that is, it's basically where your rabbit gets access to an entire bunny proofed room or maybe even more if you can adequately bunny proof it. And the idea is they get to exercise, they get to explore to their heart's content and I believe it makes the most well-rounded, happy rabbit that's willing to give you love and in, in, um, in return. But LOL Rabbitry says that rabbits that are allowed to free range tend to become somewhat feral in temperament and difficult to handle. This typically results in either fearfulness or aggression. I have found the exact opposite to be true in my experiences with rabbits I haven't had a, a single one get worse with free roaming. They've always become more calm, less afraid, less aggressive when they're allowed to get their energy out, you know, and exercise their minds and explore. That's been my experience. And they also are more grateful to you because they get to live next to you and spend time with you and realize, oh, you're not going to bother them too much. Here's the thing, like when they're in a cage, their only experience with humans is when they're, you know, reaching in and picking them up and like prodding them and grooming them or cleaning and moving all their stuff around versus when they're free roaming, their idea of you is much different and you're just kind of a roommate, you know, and they see you for who you are and they know you're not going to always be bothering them and they can respect you a lot more. And they, they show that respect through love and they let you cuddle them more. And so I've just found the complete opposite to be true in my experience. They said, if it's important to you that your rabbit is friendly, calm, and easy to handle, of course, you will need to house it in a cage. Contrary to what one might think, cages are not remotely cruel. Most rabbits are actually significantly calmer and less stressed in a cage. I have also found the exact opposite of this to be true in my day-to-day -day life. For example, all the rabbits at the shelters and cages, of course, um, are very nervous. They're very scared in those cages. And I think what this person might be trying to get at is that a cage is kind of a place for them to hide. And you can absolutely provide that in a free roam environment with, you know, a box or some other kind of more elaborate hidey house. And what I found is that over time, your rabbit doesn't even feel like it needs to hide so much when it's free roaming, but the option is always there. It's similar with like, I'd say like any dog or cat, you know, when they're stuck in a cage, they get cage aggression. Um, because they feel trapped and nervous and they just take that out on a person when they open the cage. So I thought this was really strange that they would have reversed this and say that they're more aggressive in cages. And they say most breeds should be housed in a cage of no more than 24 by 36 inches. That is so, that is so small. Like the rabbits that I've fostered, when they stretch completely out, they're three feet long. Like they're not they're not going to be able to run or do anything in a two by three foot cage that's that's just ridiculous that i would dare say cruel also on the difficulty to handle thing it's just a natural thing rabbits are prey animals and they're not going to want to be handled it's scary it's scary to be picked up and to not have your feet on the ground and you know and at first humans smell weird and they sound weird and it's just a scary experience. And so realizing that and taking the time to appropriately bond with them, getting down on their level, not reaching out and letting them come to you, 
that's how you're going to get over that difficulty in connecting and in handling them. And eventually they might be more okay with you handling them. But the solution is definitely not putting them in a small place because that just enhances the fear. But then we get to the next part and it's about wire cages. And I thought, oh, certainly an article with the title of like wire cages, this is going to be anti-wire cages. I've never heard anything different, anything at all in the rabbit world. They think that it's the only acceptable way to house your rabbit is in a wire cage. They say that rabbits have pads on their feet, fur pads that are thick and densely packed, which means that wire doesn't touch their skin. The wire doesn't poke them, rub on them, or otherwise irritate their feet, which is absolutely false. Um, the, the fur on their feet is basically the same consistency as any other part of them, and it's very thin fur. And while it's enough to be able to like, you know, walk around day to day, it's not going to be comfortable on wire. And we often see in rescue that the rabbits that are kept in wire cages have sore hawks, which are basically sores on the soles of their feet from standing on these wire cages and they can become infected and be deadly at times in a really bad case. So I, this person specifies that it's important to have a good wire cage, but doesn't elaborate on what that would mean, which is why I'm extra skeptical about this one, because it's like, obviously there are no good wire cages, just let them on the rug. <laughs> like, I don't know what else, I don't know how else to put it. I had to take a break before this next one. I, I'm trying to be calm and professional, but this is just crazy, you guys. Like, anyways, they, don't believe your rabbit needs a litter box. They say it may seem surprising, but you actually don't need a litter box for your rabbit. If they are housed in a good quality wire floor cage, the poop will drop right through the wire into the tray underneath. The purpose of this style of cage is to pre prevent your rabbit from ever sitting in their own pee and poop. Offering a litter box defeats the purpose of housing the rabbit on wire by allowing them to sit in their own waste. Here's the thing about a litter box and a wire cage like that. The reason you're seeing rabbits sitting in their litter box and hanging out in their feces is because the wire is uncomfortable. And so their only comfortable place is in their own poop and pee. It's just crazy to me to think that that doesn't cross your mind when you see this happening. I can't, I can't you guys. Rabbits very easily litter train themselves. If you put hay near a litter box, like it's natural for them to want to have a dedicated space for their business. And they're very tidy animals. They don't want to have to poop and pee and have to sit in it. You know, they are very obsessed with keeping themselves clean and grooming themselves all the time. And so it doesn't make any sense to me why they wouldn't want a litter box. <laughs> I don't know. This one's this one's weird. Oh yeah. Also, also they say in like the things you don't need section, they say you don't need to waste your money buying them a bed or a blanket for their cage because they're just going to poop and pee on it. Which of course they are if they don't have a litter box. Are you kidding me? That's just ridiculous. They also say, oh, they're not gonna enjoy it anyway, they're not gonna use it anyway not even close to the truth, especially if they're in a wire cage, they're going to be on that thing to protect their feet. And if they don't have a litter box, that's where they're going to do their business too. And so it's just, it comes across so just cruel to me. Like, don't even bother buying them a blanket. You can spare a blanket for your rabbit. That's, that's just wild for me. Even the rabbits in shelters, all of them get at least one blanket or towel. Even when like times are tough and resources are scarce, that's the bare minimum. Like it's hard on their feet to be standing on wire, of course, but even like hardwood floor, it's hard on their feet. They need something to help them. So that's, that one just feels cruel and unnecessary. Um, yeah, not a fan of that one. This next one I was less surprised by, but still completely disagree with. It's their take on fixing your rabbits, spaying and neutering your rabbits. 
they are against it at all costs, which, you know, in the rescue world, we get a rabbit and it's immediately spayed or neutered. Like as soon as possible, it has so many benefits for their health, which I'll go into, but also just preventing unwanted litters. Because if someone like a breeder who an owner thinks, oh, this is a reputable, a reputable breeder, I'm going to buy from them and then not fix my rabbit because they suggested I don't, there's a very high possibility that in the future we might end up with an unwanted litter. Um, either the rabbit escapes or is becomes a stray um, through whatever other reason, or it even comes into very brief contact with a rabbit of the, uh, of the other sex. There's so many things that can go wrong, and so that's why always in rescue, you always spay and neuter before adopting. So this is what they say about that. I recommend against spaying and neutering rabbits unless there's a medical necessity. Rabbits are incredibly sensitive to anesthesia and even the simplest surgeries kill rabbits on a semi-regular basis, which isn't true. <laughs> I, I feel like I don't really have to go into that. Medical professionals would not be doing this in mass if this were true. Obviously some pets do die in spaying and neutering, but Oftentimes there's an uh, there's some other medical complication, but it's absolutely not a semi-regular thing at all. So I, I think this person's just using this for their argument, but I wouldn't believe that at all. They also say a lot of rescue organizations spread a lot of pro-spaying and neutering propaganda on the internet as they wish to decrease the number of irresponsibly bred litters. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, and it's not just irresponsibly bred litters. Obviously, some people are gonna, you know, have a backyard breeding thing where they, you know, get rabbits and then they breed and they try to make an extra buck. But like most of the litters that we find are just accidental. People didn't realize that their bunnies were the opposite sex and they thought it'd be okay, or they end up on the street and reproduce. So no need to call it propaganda though. They say, however, if your rabbit is being housed by itself, there's really no reason to spay and neuter. A lot of rabbit rescues like to scare pet owners by claiming that 80% of intact does, female rabbits, die of uterine cancer. This statistic was cherry picked from a very flawed study from the 1980s and does not have any legitimate scientific backing. I've not seen any evidence that this is not the case. I don't know the exact study she's referring to, but this is definitely true and definitely a reason why rescues go out of their way to spend so much money spaying and neutering every single rabbit that comes in. I don't know why they would make this up to sterilize more rabbits. It's just, I don't know what to say except for I believe that this statistic is true and I'd like to see the study that it was cherry picked from. Other benefits that go along with spaying and neutering your rabbit aside from those um, very preventable cancers are things like aggression, um, their destructiveness, and litter box habits. So if LOL Rabbitry has been having a lot of litter box issues and aggressive rabbits, I, I don't know what to tell you. There's one easy way to fix this, and it doesn't always work, but it definitely improves in almost every rabbit. So the next topic is pulled from their FAQ, and it has to do with a question that is often presented. Is it true that mixed breed rabbits are healthier? And they say, no, this is a myth perpetuated by the rescue community. A responsible purebred breeder selects for the genetically best representations of their breed. And I, I disagree, not because it's a myth perpetuated by the rescue community. I believe that all rabbits are going to have their own genetic issues. And this is just due to the way they were domesticated. In my previous video, I talked about the history of domestication and kind of how these traits were selected for. For example, loppy ears, which is one of the traits that LOL Rabbitry obviously breeds for. They also said, by sheer luck, you might end up with a genetically healthy and sound animal, but the odds of that are fairly low. 
I don't think it's a fairly low thing to get a healthy animal from the shelter. All of the animals that come in have to go under like a medical exam and make sure they're all okay before they can be put back out, especially if they're strays and we don't know about their past. Any rabbit is deserving of a home and you shouldn't you shouldn't go out looking for one that's the genetically best when there are so many great alternatives and shelters, even if they aren't 100% purebred. Essentially, you will not get a healthier rabbit from a breeder. And I can say that in the terms of medical costs, all medical costs for rabbits are going to be high. They're exotic animals um, in the veterinary world Often because they are considered exotic animals, they have very high costs associated with their care. Medical bills are just an inevitable part of owning a rabbit. And I think it's a little misguiding to almost promote your rabbits as so healthy and these other rabbits from shelters are gonna cost you, you know, when the reality is it's just gonna be expensive either way. So they're, a so they're against vegetables, which is in almost every other part of the world considered an important part of your rabbit's diet. Um, and they say that their reasoning for this is that the trouble is that given the high water content, they put the rabbit at risk of bloat and GI stasis, which are typically fatal. This is why rabbits in the rescue community are constantly having GI issues and winding up with thousand dollar plus vet bills. I'm not a vet, but I don't believe that excess water can lead to these conditions. It's important when you're washing your vegetables to also dry them off or at least at the very least shake them out. But oftentimes this water content that's in the vegetables or even the water you wash it with can be a really good supplement because rabbits need to stay very hydrated and some of them, especially if they have a water bottle, don't always get the, the water that they need to stay hydrated and stay functioning. And so it can actually help with their whole digestive system and the fiber content in these vegetables are helpful in reducing stasis. I don't think that rescue rabbits are having more stasis problems than other, than other rabbits. Usually you see stasis from things like ingesting fur or something they're not supposed to eat. Yeah, I've never heard of a case from vegetables. And finally, there's so much more on this website and I just don't want to nitpick every single detail. I do think there's some good information on there. Definitely not a guide I would use. If you're looking for a guide, I would recommend the House Rabbit Society's website. They have an excellent, very detailed uh, list of everything you need, all the questions you might want to ask. They've been doing this forever, so I would go there. But yeah, the last item on this list regards bonding or having a bonded pair of rabbits. They are anti-bonding. <laughs> they say that while domestic rabbits have the aggression towards humans bred out of them, they still retain their territorial nature toward other rabbits and will bully and attack other rabbits in their territory. As such, they are far happier and less stressed without a companion. They say that rabbits are not social animals and that like, unlike all these other species, they actually, their ancestors did not have a community of other rabbits, which just is blatantly false. Um, rabbits are absolutely social animals. They're extremely social animals. And that's why they make such good pets because they have a bond with you when you're doing it right. And yeah, there have been scientific studies that show that bonded rabbits live happier and sometimes longer lives because they can support one another. So this is just, again, not true and I would not believe um, the information coming from this website. I was about to move on from this section, but I just looked back at this quote. What do they mean by domestic rabbits have the aggression towards humans bred out of them? I don't know any rabbit ancestor that is um, aggressive towards humans. I don't think that's a thing. Uh, rabbits are prey animals and so their main instinct, like their brain is wired to flee. There's no fight or flight, it's just like flight. That's obviously something that's not based on science or fact, so I really, it's hard to trust anything that this person says, especially when there's stuff that's just not in any world correct. <laughs> I just want to put it out there that 
I don't intend for this to be some kind of personal attack or grievance that I have with this person. The goal of this video is more to expose you guys to the thoughts and practices of rabbit trees at large. I think that breeding for profit does influence some of these behaviors and some of these practices just in the nature of what they do. As a rescue community extremist, I don't want anyone to go to their page and, you know, harass them. Why did you say this? Why did you say that? I just want, if anything, to spread the word about rabbit trees in general. While the title of this video and the content of this video is about LOL rabbit tree, a lot of this stuff applies to just the broader breeding sphere of rabbits. And so please don't direct any hate towards this one person. Um, I'd like instead for you to spread awareness about the issues of rabbit trees, that this is an outdated practice that still exists, and that adoption can be a very viable option for people. Like, a lot of people don't know that you can adopt a rabbit, and so they go to a pet store or a breeder. So that's really the main takeaway I want you to leave with. Also, I wouldn't trust any information coming from just one source, especially with a source that is, you know, for profit with their own goals. This here shows why it's so important to do your research and cross check with so many places because um, at the end of the day, they have their agenda, rescues have their extremist agendas. But yeah, thank you guys for watching this little video. This is definitely a more informal style of video. If you prefer this to some of my more scripted educational videos, you can leave a comment and let me know. And let me know if you'd like to see any more of these type of videos in the future. All right, thank you everybody and goodbye.